remember her getting so mad at me. She was like, oh, you think you're the shit? She was like, fight me. And in my mind, I'm like, what the fuck? So my mom started swinging at me. And I was like, pussy, you know what I mean? Like, I was, I was like, I'm not going to hit my mother. I'm not going to touch her. I don't know why the hell she's hitting me like this, but... My name is Cassandra Liz, and this is my story. I contemplated on telling my story, but I feel like after watching um, many YouTubers who have dealt with things like this in their past and um, in their childhood, I was just like, I feel like I could possibly help out others who have went through these things or who are currently going through these things. I don't want to sit here and cry or want you guys to feel like I'm over here seeking attention or anything. It's just, um, you really never know what somebody is going through. In life right now, I feel like we're all so judgmental and so concerned about everybody else's lives. And so we just um, assume things that we really don't know without asking. And um, I mean, some people like me can't really sit here and talk about certain things or certain topics because, you know, I get emotional. I be, you know, sad or whatever. So you guys are very well aware that I was always back and forth from Chicago to Philadelphia. My mom and my dad were never were serious, obviously, but from what both of them tell me that I can remember is, you know, things didn't work out and my mom ended up moving, like, they met in Chicago, but my mom ended up moving to Philadelphia. So, um... It was just always a back and forth thing. I don't know how they worked that out, but I am so thankful that, you know, my mom allowed my father to always be there in my life. And, um, you know, like, they tried. They tried. Growing up, um, I always flew for the, like, for, like, summer breaks or, like, school breaks to Chicago to be with my dad. And, honestly, in the beginning, being so young, I was very very connected to my mother more because you know my mom was like my best friend I feel like every mother is their child's best friend like I was always so afraid to talk to my dad growing up because oh I get so emotional talking about this <laughs> I get so emotional don't, don't cry don't cry yet don't cry I always wanted to make my uh, uh, always wanted to make my mom and my my dad very proud of me um I was always in trouble growing up. I don't feel like there was ever a day that I was not in trouble for over like the littlest, itty bittiest things. But I get like, you know, like as parents, we try to do our best, you know, to provide for our child and to help them grow to be very successful. And I get that that's what my family did. Don't get it, don't get it booked up, okay? Like I used to be a rebel. I was very rebellious. Um, so yeah, most of my life I was always with my mother and my brothers in North Philly. I did things that I shouldn't have done. Um, but a lot of that made me t who I am today and made me want to be a, a better parent for my son. I know what it was like to not have that support, to not, um, Ugh, I don't want to cry. <laughs> to not feel like you weren't good enough. There's times where I feel like that with my child. But then, like, he makes it seem like I'm the best mommy in the world. And that is honestly the best feeling. Like, knowing that he looks up to me and he praises me as if I'm the best person in the world. In reality, that's how I was with my mom and my dad. I just, I love them. I didn't care for the hurt that they put me through or any of those things and neither one of them are bad people you know what I mean like we just we grow up differently and sometimes life is not what you expect I'm sure I wasn't planned or whatever you know but I came about and here I am oh my goodness this is becoming like the most emotional video that I have ever made but I just want to be 100% honest and let's just keep going my mom dated a lot of men um, and did a lot of things and um, you know she wasn't very attentive to her to her kids a lot of the things that happened in front of me I like I don't want to say everything cuz I don't want my mom to feel like I'm bashing her or saying anything negative I just feel like I want to forgive and I want to forget and I just want to move forward with things that never really gave us um, a clear explanation as to why. Now, we moved to this street called Stella Street. It was on B and Stella on the north side of Philly. 
Um, this is really when I started to grow up. I was only nine years old, you guys. I was nine years old. And motherfuckers treated me like I was really a teenager or a grown-up because my mentality had to grow that way. I feel like I grew up fast once nine years old hit. It was a rap. I was out in the streets, hanging out with boys, thinking I was grown. My dad, he didn't even know what was going on. This man was so lost in the sauce. He was in Chicago. He would call me on weekends. Um, my dad was a big time DJ back then. So, you know what I mean? Like, he he wasn't really paying attention to what was going on. I remember her getting so mad at me. She was like, oh, you think you're the shit? She was like, fight me. And in my mind, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with So my mom started swinging at me. And I was like, pussy, you know what I mean? Like, I was, I was like, I'm not gonna hit my mother. I'm not gonna touch her. Like, I don't know why the hell she's hitting me like this, but... I get so mad because every time I think about that, I remember that. My mom always wanting to flip and get upset about littlest things. And it was things that her children never did to her. So whatever somebody else, like, did to her, she would take that shit out on everybody. I remember her grabbing a figura and telling me, fuck you, and she threw it at my head. My constant reminder from her was always, I brought you to this world and I can easily take you out. That type of stuff would stay in my mind and all I could think was why am I here why did God give me the mother that I have why am I not good enough for her she was spaz and take that shit out on me I remember my mom um leaving and she was like I'll be back and I was like okay like you know she coming right back um she was like just watch the boys you know typical the oldest child has to watch all your baby kids you know life right I remember walking out the house and I was like but mom why are you going like wh where are you going like why and I started crying I was like so you gonna choose that over us and she started laughing in my face as if I was a fucking joke as if she didn't care and my mom came back doped out slept for three days I'm telling you guys three days she did not wake up one morning it was like Mother's Day and I was like you know telling my little brothers I was like let's make mom you know a Mother's Day card and you know tell her that we love her and stuff and um I remember she came up the stairs and, she, and we gave her the card she's like fuck Mother's Day straight like that how do you tell your children that when they look up to you so much how do you resent your kids but yeah, you willing to open your legs and have them. I don't understand that. But to me, she was still the queen. She was still my best friend. She was still somebody I looked up to. When people used to ask me, what do you want to be in life? I used to say that I wanted to be just like my mom. And now I look back and it's like, I'm nothing like you. And I am so thankful that I'm nothing like you. And that I am such a better mother to my child or one winter it was after my birthday i had just got off the phone with my father i think this was my 11th birthday he was like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna send for you i'm gonna bring you over here so that you can hang out with your cousins and um so that you can be with your family out here for a little bit and then you'll go back home my mom in my mind i'm like okay i'm gonna go visit my dad i'll come right back i never liked being here in chicago i didn't like it um, I love being with my family, but I did not like staying here. I had no freedom. You know, things that you're supposed to really have, I didn't want that. I didn't want that. I wanted to still be in the streets. And um, I remember um, she was like, yeah, you're going to go with your dad. You, get, you might as well say bye to your friends. I was like, I'm not going to say bye to my friends because I'm going to come right back, right? And she was like, yeah, but you're going to want to say bye to them for a little while because it's a week, cast. that's a long time. So, you know, she's convincing me, like, it's just a week. Everything is going to be fine. You're going to come back home. I remember her... Um, having my uncle drop me off to the airport. I didn't have luggage. I didn't have any clothes or anything My mom just sent me um, And I remember crying on that plane and I was just like I'm gonna miss my brother I'm gonna miss my brother. That was so sad all the whole time Me always leaving back and forth. All I thought about was my brothers like I don't know I, I never thought like oh my mom because like I said like my mom was abusive. She she would mentally 
abuse and physically abuse us. And I got to Chicago and I remember my dad being right there. He used to always be right at the gates. Once I would get out the freaking door, my dad was right there and he's like, Cassie. And I just run up to my dad, dad, like I was always so excited to see him because I really didn't see him on a, on a regular basis. I remember him taking me to the house and I remember him talking to my grandma about, you know, my mother not sending for me, like sending clothes and stuff like that. And um, I remember like my aunt went out and she went and bought me a brand new pair of chucks and a whole like whole wardrobe set. Like I got mad at my cousin, like me and my cousin, we were always like feuding. It was always something and I remember getting mad at her. I was like, ah, I fucking hate this place. I was like, I'm not fucking staying here. And I, that's exactly how I said it. Dad didn't say nothing about that. But you know, he was a little bit hurt. He was like, you're not going back home. What don't you understand? And I was like, I want to talk to my mom. And I just had like the biggest fit. I was so mad. And she was like, yeah, Cass, I'm sorry. Um, You know, I can't take care of you right now. She was like, I'll tell your brothers that you love them. And hopefully you'll see them soon, like when you come to visit. I said, wait, I'm not coming back home. And she was like, no, you're going to you're gonna officially live with your dad. I was so beyond hurt. I was so, so mad. Like, why? So once I moved to Chicago, I was 11 years old, and I did not hear from my mother until I was 16 years old. I started to realize, you know, um, I wasn't going to see my mom. There was years that I didn't speak to my mom she didn't call none of that I remember getting a phone call from my brother's um father and they were saying you know that they were in the foster care I remember him talking to my dad about it and my dad just being like oh my god she's something I was like talking about my mom they were just sitting there talking about my mom I am forever thankful that their father found out these things and you know took them in and my mom was just really out there bad um doing i mean i don't know what type of different drugs she did but you could genuinely tell that she was really effed up like my mom was skinny as a stick not healthy looking looking like she was about to die that's how you know serious it got that moment it was more so she had to take care of herself for her and in reality i always say this because i mean this you can't help somebody who does not want to be helped no matter how much you push them you can't push someone to want to help themselves they gotta want that for themselves they gotta want more for themselves in order to become successful and on my 16th birthday my dad wanted to do um this big sweet 16. i was super excited you see mtv sweet 16 you're thinking oh i'm getting this big old fancy schmancy party um but the way money was set up in my family, I didn't, I didn't want them to spend all that money on me. I wasn't, I wasn't into all that. I, I just wanted, you know, to be around my family. I, my dad did a lot of things just to make me happy. I remember my dad calling me and telling me that he bought my mother's ticket and that she was gonna come here to visit me, and that um she would stay with me for a week. So I remember my birthday, it was snowing so much this day and my aunt's man had took me to the train stop um, to go pick up my mother and I remember we walked inside and he was like, do you see her anywhere? Like, is she here? And I'm looking around, I'm like, she probably didn't even come, she's not here, she didn't come. And I remember, like, hearing my name, she's like, Cassie? I was so freaking happy, I was so excited just to see her face. And I was just like, I miss you so much. She just wanted what was best for me and my future. She didn't have it like that. We didn't have money, but she had no idea that money and those types of things didn't... Like, I didn't care for that. I didn't care for any of that. We could have been bums on the street. So she came, she stayed a week, and, um, you know, my mom ended up poofing again. Through high school, I kept her voice in my mind, and um, there was this thing that she used to tell me, and she would say, without an education, you are no one, you are nobody. So, even when I was failing, I had good support because my aunt was there, like, she pushed me when I would mess up, you know, she would, uh, she would correct us. She had kids of her own, but... 
to her I was one of her kids she pushed me to do so much more for myself to become tough like to grow thick skin so I'm forever thankful for my aunt because um because of her I graduated high school when I doubted myself there was times where I would get so upset I would say I wish I died I don't want to live anymore I just I was genuinely always looking for love in the wrong places and wanting love from any and everybody I talked to. That's a shame. I would get emotional and hate myself. I didn't know how to love and I hurt people, you know, down the line and I felt like a fucking complete nut. I genuinely don't know how to love because I didn't have that. I push away people who care for me and who loved me I don't know how to like give back all I know how to do is push people away because that's you know what I was raised around that's what I grew up around no matter the hurt that you are going through life always has a better path for you I still cannot speak to my mother to this day without getting upset like my, my mom never really sat there and you know told me how proud she was of me or told me thank you because i raised my brothers so young i was nine years old providing for them my dad would send me money and all my money would go towards my brothers things get better there's always a different journey for you what you are going through right now in two to three years you probably will be somewhere else somewhere better you just got to keep a positive mindset. Believe in yourself. Self-love is literally everything. And if you got to cry like this on a camera to reflect on life like me, do so. Let your story be told.